Hello, this is Douglas Rumbaugh, and in this video I would like to talk about Pop! OS, specifically Pop! OS 20.04. So, I have, for the vast majority of my time using Linux, been an Arch user. But recently I purchased a System76 laptop about the beginning of June, and I figured I'd try something different. So I left Pop! OS on that, and I installed Pop! OS on my main computer as well, just for consistency of experience across the different devices, and have been playing around with it ever since. And having used it for about two months now, I want to just take some time and talk about what I like about it and what I don't like about it. To begin with, I have to say that Pop! OS works well. When you install it, everything pretty much just works out of the box, which is very nice. So of course, part of the fun of something like, say, Arch Linux is is building everything and putting it together yourself. And there's definitely a lot of fun there. But at the same time, I've, I'm reaching a point in my life where I kind of just want to use a computer to get work done. And so having a computer that pretty much just works is, is very convenient in that regard. And I, I do enjoy that quite a bit. Now, it's not all sunshine and roses. There are a couple of things that I don't particularly like about Pop! OS. And uh, we'll get into that as we go. So to begin with, this is a running in a virtual machine, GNOME Boxes, for full disclosure. I wanted a completely stock setup just so I can walk you through what it looks like to begin with. Now, of course, it runs GNOME, uh, but whoop, let me actually select the this thing. There we go. And its stock install has very few applications in it, which is nice. It, they're giving you a nice basis on which to build. And of those stock applications, you pretty much have your standard GNOME applications, as well as Firefox, LibreOffice, and the Pop Shop, which is interesting, and we will we will talk about that. Being a standard GNOME environment, it has all of the the bells and whistles you would expect of GNOME, uh, such as having a centralized account management for certain accounts. If you're lucky enough to have one of these. I was not able to get the Microsoft stuff working using my my work accounts, but I suspect that was that's more of a configuration issue on the work side than it is here. IMAP and SMTP works just fine. So if you configure your email here, I use Fastmail. It does just show up in your email clients and, and things of that nature. It would be nice if they either were to add a Fastmail option here or if they were to have, say, a, a CalDAV or CardDAV, as well as IMAP and SMTP generic down here. As I understand it, that is something that's in the works. But it works fine for email anyway. And then the rest of the settings are, I'm not going to walk you through GNOME. <laughs> uh, one neat thing about Pop! OS is that it does have a built-in firmware updater. Now, obviously, this is for the System76 computers themselves, but it does actually manage more than just that. Uh, so, for example, on my uh, my laptop, I plugged in a wireless mouse, a Logitech unifying receiver, and the the firmware updater actually picked that up and was able to install updated firmware for my wireless mouse. So it supports more than just the Pop! OS, or not the Pop! OS, uh, more than just the System76 computers themselves. Uh, the printers is also nice. Uh, obviously, this is in a virtual machine and whatnot, but on my regular computer, I just turned my computer on and it audited it auto detected my HP printer. Now my main printer is a brother printer and that required installing some drivers, but just installing the drivers from the brother website, printing and scanning both work great with very little effort. In general, if you're unfamiliar with GNOME, we have a centralized notification and calendar panel here. Now what's neat is when you have calendar events set up, if you click on the day, uh, then you can see no events here. It will actually show the calendar events for that day right here. Sometimes. Uh, I have noticed that it is not perfect. Uh, that it misses stuff. So there there will be calendar events that are in my calendar that don't show up here for some reason. And I haven't quite figured out what the issue is there. I'm assuming that it's it's either a bug or I have something misconfigured and I haven't cared enough to look into it to figure it out. Uh, but do be aware there's a chance that you'll have issues with that. It also supports GNOME weather, and that pops up right here once you set your location properly, which is quite convenient. Although 
GNOME Weather itself as an application. I believe it relies on the Norwegian Weather Service, and so your location options are quite limited. Beyond that, there, is, there are a couple of stock uh, pop things that are above and beyond standard GNOME. So we have this, which is uh, Pop Shell, which basically supports using a or supports using GNOME with a tiling window manager. So as you can see, I can pop up windows and it tiles them. Uh, it, it's much more responsive when you're not in a virtual machine. So don't let that uh, don't let that scare you. Uh, so you can toggle it on and off with Windows key Y, and when it's on like that your new windows are going to tile and you can navigate between them by holding down the windows key or the the meta key and using either the arrows to select them or also it supports HJKNL. Now because of pop shell as I understand it there are non-standard key bindings for GNOME so there's a keyboard shortcut list here for everything which is quite neat. Uh, but the keyboard, the key bindings are non-standard. It doesn't affect me because I've never used GNOME before. This is my first GNOME experience. So whatever, I'm just learning the non-standard key bindings. Now in terms of built-in applications that it comes with, let me just run down these real quick. You have the GNOME calculator, which actually, we throw this in advanced mode, is a really good calculator. I'm quite fond of this. And it actually ties into Pop Shell. So the Pop Shell application launcher you can access by typing the Windows key and slash like this. And if and here you can say launch, I don't know, Geary, and Geary will pop up. Um, or you can select an already open window like you see here with calculator. But if you punch an equal sign in here, you can actually access GNOME calculator directly from here and run quick calculations, which is quite nice. Escape key closes that. Uh, you got Calendar, Contacts, and Geary are sort of your standard suite of uh, office, or of we'll call them communication applications. One thing to bear in mind is that as of now, Calendar and uh, Contacts as well works the same way, does actually support arbitrary CalDAV, even though you can't plug it in here. So if you go to add an account, it takes you to here, and there's no way to, say, put in my fast mail, ca fast mail calendar. It is possible to do though, but there's no way to do it from within the calendar app. So what you have to do is you can import, but it won't sync it, right? If it belongs to an online account, you have to set it up in online accounts, which doesn't help you if you have, say, Fastmail. Uh, but it does support it. You just have to install Evolution first. So the, the Evolution is like the, the known version of Outlook. Once you've installed Evolution, you can use Evolution to set up your calendars and con your calendar and contacts, and then the Cal calendar and contacts apps here will actually pick those up and use them. So you can't configure them within these apps, but if you install Evolution, you can make it work. I will say one annoying thing: I have encountered a bug in the calendar where sometimes when you set up an event it will duplicate the event. It won't actually duplicate it in the on your, your CalDAV server, but it will show up twice side by side. Uh, and sometimes the timing is weird and adding events is a little bit tricky just because of the way that it defaults things. Uh, but there's nothing there that is sufficiently annoying that I've stopped using it. Contacts I don't use very much. Uh, now Geary, Geary is their email client. And again, it's the same story as with Calendar. It's not sufficiently annoying that I've felt the need to install something else, uh, but it does have a couple of annoying bugs. Uh, it loses connection quite often. Sometimes it won't mark an email as read, or rather it won't uh, update the counts of unread emails when you read an email. It, it really does not work when you have a VPN. When you connect to a VPN, Geary drops connection completely and won't reconnect until the VPN is gone. So it has issues but nothing so significant that I've felt the need to stop using it. And of course, if you have, if you have issues with Calendar Contacts and Geary, you can always just install Evolution and use that. I, have, I haven't used Evolution much, but I've had no problems with it. So the Pop Shop is interesting. The Pop Shop is based on the elementary apps center, and it's just your software manager. You can, of course, use apt and Flatpak on the command line, but this 
is a graphical front end that has Flatpak support built right in. And so you can just flat go to a particular program you want and install it where it's supported either from the deb or the Flatpak. Uh, now do be aware, somewhat annoyingly, some applications actually get doubled. So rather than having a drop down like this, like we see here for Spotify for the, the deb and the Flatpak, uh, sometimes you'll just see the application listed twice. Uh, let me see if I can find one that does that quickly. Yeah, so here, like home bank, one of these is the deb and one of these is the flat pack. And occasionally the, the description or the icon are different. Now I'm actually, I've stopped using Pop Shop for the most part because it just doesn't work all that well. It's very, it, I'll see if I can, uh, it, it's laggy, it's relatively slow. And like right now, obviously it's running in a virtual machine, uh, but even when it's not in a virtual machine, it's slow. It's a little bit annoying because say you, uh, uh, what would be a good way of doing this? Uh, search for, I don't know, let's search for meld, I guess. Uh, so like when you search, right, here's your search results, but you lose all your navigation up here. So if you've done a search, and here I just clicked on meld, and there we go. So if you've done a search, right, and you wanna go back to your home page, you have to, clear the search before you can open it up. And it just has a bunch of weird and annoying quirks like that, in addition to locking up and freezing and, and that sort of thing. So hopefully they, they get this a little bit more usable in future updates. It's not that big of a deal for me because I just use the command line and, and I'm done with it. So nothing special there. Uh, but this also, of course, has all of this stuff. Oh, the other thing that I actually have had happen with um, Pop Shop was really annoying was um nvidia drivers so a while back pop shop wanted me to update my nvidia drivers uh, but the update wouldn't work so i just blindly fired up the command line and fixed it and updated the nvidia drivers the way that pop shop wanted me to but pop shop update wasn't actually an update it was a downgrade from like 430 to 419 and so everything broke and then I had to manually go back in and redo everything, remove all the NVIDIA stuff, reinstall fresh the 430 drivers, and then, yeah. And then Pop Shop just kept pestering me for a couple of days to, to upgrade to 419, which would error out and, of course, was a downgrade until eventually, I guess, they fixed it and that stopped happening. So it's not perfect, it, but it does work well enough, I suppose. In Pop Shop's defense, the 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 quote unquote downgrade for Nvidia actually didn't work within Pop Shop. It just threw error messages. The only reason why I got myself in that situation is I decided to force the issue and and clean or remove a bunch of packages and reinstall from the command line to get it to actually work. Which, in hindsight, I should have looked a little more carefully. And not even done that, but whatever. It has a lot of useful system utilities too. Uh, like you have, of course, Seahorse for your password manager. You can manage your disks, um, format things. It has Popsicle, which is a convenient way to just quickly flash a USB drive if you don't feel like using DD on the command line. And it, it has a bunch of generally useful utilities. The screenshot support is quite good. Uh, it has this character map is quite nice as well, although without installing some packages, it does uh, lack support for a bunch of different obscure glyphs. But you can fix most of these by installing the right font packages. Um, let's see, weather is weather. Doesn't have a default music player. It uses videos for that, which is fine. Works the same. Uh, the document scanner works pretty well. Archive Manager works pretty well. It does have built-in an extensions manager for managing GNOME extensions. And here you can see there are a bunch of extensions that are installed by default. And you can, of course, install additional ones as well from the, the GNOME extensions website. Uh, personally, I do have a couple of extensions installed on mine that I like to use. Uh, I have um, the the GNOME extension version of KDE Connect for cell phone connections. I have Caffeine, which is quite nice. And I have uh, this uh, Vitals, I believe it's called. And then also an audio device selector. 
extension, which is really convenient. And I wish that GNOME would have this built in by default because I, and I have a, I actually have turned off most of my audio devices, but I have a ton of audio devices connected to this computer. Um, so that's really all I have to say about this default first look at Pop! OS with its default stuff. Uh, it's a perfectly usable system. It you install it, and for the most part, it just works. There's a couple of hiccups in the default applications like Geary and Pop Shop, uh, but nothing's really a deal breaker. Like I said, although there are bugs with these uh, calendar contacts in Geary, it's not sufficient enough to have driven me to switch. So I'm I'm still using them. I could switch to Evolution, but eh, it's probably not worth the hassle right now. So that's Pop OS. I like it. I have not felt a substantial urge to switch back to Arch Linux over the two months that I have been using it, which I suppose is a pretty good indication that there's there's something something nice about it. And yeah, if you have any questions or comments on, on Pop! OS, feel free to leave them down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. I may go through and do some more tutorial content on, say, setting up calendars and contacts using Evolution, if there's an interest in that sort of thing. It's not hard to figure out, but you do have to install a random other program to do it. hope that you found this interesting, and I will see you in the next one.